is just a check-in. So Wyatt died this morning at 5 a.m. Topper and Cindy have been gone for three days. There's a little Cindy head. There she is somewhere. They left, it's Friday. They left on Monday, so I haven't seen them all week. So they're finally back. So we get to have therapists helping me right now to deal with Wyatt's death because Wyatt was put down this morning at 5 a.m. and it's kind of crazy. I have to kind of handle that. It's been 12 and a half years with my beautiful Wheaton Terrier. So today's just going to be kind of chill with a heavy heart. We're just going to be chilling. All right. I miss the hell out of these guys too. So these are my other dogs that are absolutely mine. All three of these guys are. I get them as puppies and raise them as puppies. Namely Cindy and uh, Mac. Topper we met at a year old and I got the footage somewhere so I'll be able to pull that up soon. Love you, buddy. I'm digging a little bit, all right? That's where we're at right now. Heavy heart kind of a day. We lost Grant on Sunday and we lost Wyatt on Friday. See all the orange that's not pine needles? Those are pine cones. Those are these things being ripped apart by squirrels. But right here, it's like the entire width of the crown of the trees that they're devouring. I love it. This is cool. I don't usually see a tree this heavy. This one too, look at that. Wow, it's just like littered. That is pine cone seeds. Uh, what were seeds? Right, Topper? Right, Cindy? Hey, buddy. You're awesome. Notice the dog not giving chase to the deer because the dog most likely doesn't even know the deer's there. See, that's why humans and dogs are a good team. We get the eyes, they get the nose and ears. Together, we are like an Avenger. We are a super predator. This is hilarious. It's like mama, daddy, and baby. Like that. Yeah, you got one of your antlers, and a male, and a female, and a little baby. And you got a little crazy face right there, just like chilling. They're upwind, just in case anybody's wondering about the winds. Blowing straight at me right now, so crazy face isn't gonna really notice them. Distance says it all. When you're talking to an animal, distance says everything. The fact that we stopped and we walked backwards slowly and kind of turned our heads and just kind of turned around. The deer kept checking. And that means that we're walking away. We don't really care right now. So what's happening with Rufus right now is that all of his energy is getting guided into being submissive and playful 24 seven. I never want to see him try to have to be tough, act tough, dominant, any of that stuff ever. This is the whole purpose of raising a puppy. Good puppies, yeah. It's to guide him and show him how to use his energy. It's to be used like this during play, during normal walking. And we're not hunting, so he doesn't have to freak out over hunting. So it's critical that he gets his energy out just like this. Probably on a mostly empty stomach so he can actually get tired. Dogs like him need to get their energy out and they need someone to guide them along the way. As you can clearly see, I'm here to just stop any problems. They don't really have problems. Rufus might have problems with new dogs or dogs he doesn't know and trust. So Rufus got a little bit of trust issues that we're working on. Good boy, get her! A lot of people don't set their dogs up for success. This is what I'm here for, with, for him at least, or everyone else, but a dog like Rufus absolutely needs the guidance and the discipline. It's a mixture of both. This is the reward. The reward is being a good dog so you can have freedom, so you can get to play and create a positive experience every single time you come out with rarely any negative experiences, and that's the key to it. I'm pretty strict because I don't allow negative experiences, and if I see them, I'm gonna stamp them out pretty fast, just like the wolves do. Nobody allows that stuff for too long when you're an alpha dog here, so, or a parent, right, Top? Just a little check up on Rufus. And getting attacked by mosquitoes because they know I'm filming. Right, little maniac? I do this just like Nacho. Domesticated wolves. Sense of smell is 100,000 times stronger than humans. They can smell who was here. And when. Here we have domesticated wolves practicing for the kill. Their survival depends on this behavior. They must practice for the kill. It keeps their senses sharp and their bodies ready for the chase, the hunt, and the kill. Domesticated wolves are wolves that don't have to hunt. What we have here is Canis lupus familiaris, the domesticated wolf the sister species of the northern gray wolf. Here they are cooling off on a hot summer's day while they don't have to hunt. Here we have Canis lupus familiaris, the domesticated wolf. 
cooling off on a hot summer's day. So here we are. Just going on a Saturday, like noon. Heading right over to the park at the water, doing water fetch. Boat's favorite thing on earth. No walking, straight water fetch. Like 10 feet of walking, all water fetch. That's exactly what he wants. It's the first week without Wyatt, so it's been really, really weird and somber and depressing and sad and all that glorious stuff. I uh, really didn't want to film much this week because there's nothing really to film. It's sad, man. It's just sad and lonely and depressing, so I'm trying to not be so sad around the whole pack. you got to represent strength and moving forward no matter what, as a wild wolf pack would have no choice doing, just like we sort of have no choice doing. Gotta move forward no matter what. So, that's all. Just a little check-in. Hitting the park up right now. Gonna go party. <laughs> so ridiculous. Look at these guys. Those are good puppies. <laughs> yep, on the wood chip pile. We love wood chip piles. Look at these guys, you know? They're so awesome. Simulated pack unit. Good boy, buddy, get the ball. You got it right there, bring it over. That's so funny. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they love that little hole right here. Let someone dug out. Oh, someone's squealing. Good puppies! <laughs> so funny. Rufus is enjoying himself being submissive to the pack. See, he's smart enough to realize that the reward for being a submissive, nice sweetheart is nothing but play, affection, attention, treats. When you're an aggressive a-hole that likes to use your teeth, then uh, yeah, you're gonna get muzzled, disciplined, negative punished until you figure it out. But these guys don't have to. But you know what I mean? Plenty of bad dogs on the earth. Luckily these aren't any of those dogs. <laughs> They're good puppies. As a dog trainer, I'm baffled by the amount of people out there that have no idea about what a dog is. A dog's basic instincts. A dog's most basic instincts. I try to follow the pack. They don't know any of that stuff. So I'm um, here to kind of help, you know? But I don't think anyone's gonna listen to me. Little old me, why are they gonna listen to me? What do I have to offer? What do I have to offer that'll make them listen to me? Nothing. You guys wanna get into some nitty gritty or what, huh? You guys wanna talk about some of the worst stuff on earth when it comes to dogs? Or should we keep it all fun and friendly? Most people don't really get it out there when it comes to dogs. They don't really take them as serious as wild wolves and train them accordingly. Why would they do that? They were never taught to do anything like that. Four dogs right here are fully capable of doing everything that a wild wolf pack could do, except take down an animal. But they could all attack an animal at the same time, couldn't they? Couldn't they? Look at them right there. They can all bite with superpower. They all have ridiculous bite force, crazy stamina. Doesn't matter what the breed is. It could be pit bull, Doberman Pinscher, German Shepherd, Golden Retriever mix, pet mix. Australian cow dog or another golden retriever who's a hundred pounds. If Topper ever decided to get pissed off and attack, yeah, you're gonna have problems. He's capable of killing lots of things, lots of animals. Yes, Topper, Mr. Nice Guy. He's capable of killing because he's a domesticated wolf. Right, buddy? Look at my buddy right there. And that's half the problem when it comes to dogs that people just don't take them seriously. They don't even think they're wolves. Even though 99.9% .9 of their DNA matches that of the northern gray wolf, Canis lupus, they still don't think they're wolves. Look at you, you're so hilarious. Good boy, get up there. Good puppy. So yeah, we're walking in the park right now and there are some pack rules, or should I say park rules, <laughs> and they're pretty strict, especially when it comes to new guys like Rufus. Luckily, I know the ways of the wolves and I know what to watch for and what to correct for. But a lot of people out there have no idea about this stuff. Should I go over some of the pack rules? It's gonna probably bore a lot of people, so. Let's go over the pack rules. All right, no jumping on people, no bolting after people, kids, cyclists, other dogs, no bullying anybody, no bullying people, no bullying dogs. No raising your ears and tail and bolting up to anybody. No getting aggressive, no fighting. There's consequences for all of the worst behaviors on earth when it comes to domesticated wolves or dogs. Consequences, 
along with all the rewards and all the learning consequences. And that little fact is missing from most trainers' regiments, in my opinion, most of the world's regiments. And that's why I like studying the wolves, because the wolves actually discipline their fully grown pups, not just their little puppies. They'll discipline the whole pack, all right? Yeah, mom and dad will discipline the entire pack because the reward is just getting to survive, getting to eat, and having pack security. Silence is approval in nature. They don't need to be positively reinforced every time they do something right, okay? That's like a golden rule of nature. One of my pet peeves when it comes to humans and dog training. They treat dog training like it's some sort of like alternate reality. That they pretend like they know what they're talking about, but they really don't, okay? So, yes, what we got here are domesticated wolves fully capable of killing. Killing, especially if they all packed up and started biting together. It's too much bite force, too much power, too much endurance for most people to be able to handle. Okay, so yeah, they are lethal. Dogs are lethal when they're in a pack. Even two dogs can be lethal as a pack. So you better know what you're doing when it comes to dogs and you better get your stuff together and realize that they are domesticated wolves with all the same powers as the wild wolves. You know, do I have to go over it? Yes, wolves like to be territorial, possessive. Each alpha wolf kills at least three to six different wolves in its life, killing members next to its territory, killing neighbors in neighboring packs. They're brutal. They're like gang members out there, okay? So a wolf's general behavior is like a gang member. No regard for anybody but maybe their own pack or their own family, and that's it. So you gotta know that about dogs, since dogs are domesticated wolves. They still have the capability of acting just as bad when no one trains them or takes care of their wolf needs, which is basically like getting exercise and getting to be the animal that they are, so they don't have a, a need to attack people, humans, dogs. So yeah, there's some strict rules here at the park, and uh, if I see anything I don't like, I throw down the correction pretty quickly, which is usually hissing, poking, prodding. I'll run after them, I'll catch them, I will pin them. Just like mom and dad wolf. I felt like making a video today because I'm not in the best mood, and I really don't care. I mean, nobody's subscribing to the channel, so who really cares? No one's gonna see any of this. So I might as well drop down some truth bombs about dogs and why people screw up with their dogs so much because they just don't take it seriously enough. They think the dog's like a little stuffed teddy bear or whatever. They see some big bad breed and they like still think it's a stuffed teddy bear. Listen, I think they're stuffed teddy bears too, but I at least know that they're stuffed wolves. Not a teddy bear. So you gotta be a little different with a wolf than a bear, but they're kind of similar. Maybe I'll make a video out of this rant clip. We'll see. As you can see, everybody's absolutely loving the river, the water, the beautiful breeze. And yeah, I'm the king in control here. No one's gonna do anything I don't like, okay? Nobody. No one's gonna do anything I don't like, especially when we're in a park full of tons of people. Kids, bike lists, rollerbladers, old people, young people, dogs, puppies, old dogs, young dogs, every kind of dog out there. Special needs people, everybody's here that you want to train your dog with, okay? So there's no excuses. And you don't let your dog be territorial or possessive ever, okay? That's like the worst thing to do. People get these dogs, treat them like guard dogs, and they attack the wrong person, kid, another dog. They do serious damage or they even cause death. So that's why it's a pretty serious business out here in domesticated wolf world. And if you don't know what you're doing, you probably don't belong out here, all right? Domesticated wolves, just as much power as a wolf, especially him. I wouldn't underestimate her power either. She's pretty burly sized for a female. She's a little princess, and then he's skinny, but he's got the tenacity to do some serious damage too. What we're doing is guiding him through the park and through his puppyhood, kind of his adolescence, on how to behave and how to handle everything. And we're giving him lots of experience because experience is everything when it comes to learning and dog behavior. Most dogs with no experience out there, they're the ones that screw up. But once you start giving a dog experience, tons of experience, they flip around their game, okay? Trouble, my Doberman Pinscher, in this video right here, he's a good example of one of the worst dogs on earth who wanted to kill every dog that went near him, especially near his rear end, he would have killed. Look at him, look at how good he is now. Well, then, that's after like one or two years working with him, all right? So, don't tell me it's not possible to train really big bad breeds of dogs because I've already done it, that's how I started training. <laughs> and it's all because I treated the dog like a wolf and respected him as such. Good boy, you're so cute, look at this guy. What did you bring out? You good puppy? What is this? He's so funny. He's a big puppy, he's just a big puppy. Isn't he? He gets a toy at nine years old, he still pulls a toy out. You are just awesome, Toppy. We love you. All right, he's been your favorite dog trainer for the day. Hope you learned something. Over and out. Notice, nobody's in my space. See his paws, see my paws, see his paws, her paws, her paws, and his paws, see my feet. See how no one's in front of me? I didn't tell him to do that. I never told him to do that. They're just 
doing that, when you bring a dog to a park, they have to be chill, okay, and submissive, and they have to follow the leader. Now, they can run up ahead and have fun if they want, but there are rules to do that. You gotta pass the test and be a good dog in order to do that and get that done successfully. Then you build trust with me, and I let you go constantly up ahead of me and party all you want, but you gotta work for that position, the party position, okay? I've had dogs like Petey, who looks just like you, except a different colored coat. It took me six months to train to get him to behave, and it wasn't easy. It was kind of hellish, but we did it. And he was like the best dog on earth for three years, wasn't he? Yeah, Petey. Petey is a man. We're gonna give respects to Petey right now. Remember Petey? Petey died when he was six and a half years old. Probably six years ago now. Petey was a tough one. It took me six months to train Petey. Petey would bolt ahead and bully and try to fight other dogs like way up ahead of me. So I had to kind of really, really work that out of him. And we did. And he got to be the best dog ever for the next three years until he died. So there's this dog in the background. Big ass black, Russian, whatever mix it is. She's here with him every day. They just complimented me on my dog. I told them I'm a trainer. Having bad dogs here every day is a liability. She agreed with me, but one thing I don't like about her, not her dog so much, is that her dog's sort of aggressive and dominant and she doesn't know how to handle it, so she just holds his collar every single day when we walk by and he's huge. About the size of Topper, maybe a little bigger. But she doesn't know how to handle it if he flipped out, so I let my dogs go over to him to say hi a little more today and he didn't like that, so I called him right off and they were like, wow. Uh, you know, it's kind of bullshit that people bring their huge dogs here who are aggressive. So I advise all you people out there with massive dogs that are aggressive, either train them properly and bring them here or never come back to parks with your dog ever or else it's gonna kill another dog or a child. And then what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do then? Anyways, there they are, way in back. Pisses me off, super pet peeve. Stop bringing aggressive dogs to dog parks. All right, I'm trying to make a video here, you know? And that's the kind of crap I gotta deal with. Hey, you guys wanna see this shit, right? So let's start delivering some absolute horror when it comes to training, except my pack's pretty good, so I'm gonna have to do some house calls with people's dogs that aren't mine so you guys can see really how horrible the dog world is out there. Mm -hmm.